So I'm going to do a quick intro to Tarkov just so you can see how this game works. Um, so first thing, um, character. Here's your character. Uh, all the stuff on the side here, your stash, is like the stuff that you have, the stuff that you've bought or started with, or you've taken out of a raid somewhere. A raid's like a, like a mission. Um, so this is the stuff you can use. Now you put it onto your character, like you see I'm armed with an MP5, have some body armor or a helmet of some sort, uh, a tactical vest thing. This is like a special container that you never lose. But um, yeah, so you can see, like if I take this off, I can put on a different, this one has some magazines in it. Uh, this is like your, your chest rig. This one has MP5 magazines. Uh, so this is the stuff you have, and like, you, you know, you bring this in the game, um, you know, anything, if you die, anything on here could be looted. Although there's like something called insurance that you can like, uh, insure your stuff, and if it doesn't get, get taken from you, then you'll get it back. Um, but anyway, this is your stuff, this is your main character. Uh, you know, you can see some stats I've played. Oh, I've never, never survived as character. Um, so, you know, you can see some stats I've played a couple of games here. Um, there's my gear. Yeah, so, you know, there's things in here that are we the weapons, of course. Um, if you look at weapons, they have, here's like all the different attachments you can put on this AK-74. I uh, don't have all of them. Some of them are required. Some of them, like, you need to have a handle and a bolt or something. I don't know, a magazine. Um, but some of the pieces, like the sights, you don't necessarily need. There, I just inspected some ammo. Um, or examined it. Anyway, so you know, if you find other pieces and parts, you can put them on there. I think I might actually have an extra part for... No, I may have sold it. Anyway, yeah, so, and then there's other things you can find in raids too, like um, parts and keys and things. Here's a beard, I don't know. These parts you can use for, you can just sell them to a vendor or you can use them to like upgrade. There's this thing called a hideout uh, where things happen. You can see I'm doing stuff in here. Uh, you know, it lets you like build, like construct items and things like that. Um, so, so some of that stuff is used in there. Some of it's just meant to be sold, I guess. Uh, there's <clears throat> dealers. Each of these dealers will sell you different types of things. And you can see like each of these different guns with like different ammo, uh, and, like, different parts. I can tell it to show me. Uh, I don't have anything that's available that's compatible. But you know, all these different parts, you can figure out what things you want to put onto your gun. And ammo, you can see like there's lots of different ammo. Um, see, these are all. You can see these are all 9x18, but this is 9x18 PMPRS GS and PMPRS GS PP. Oh, and like each of these things does has a different properties. They do different damage or different armor penetration, things like that. Uh, so, you know, you have to figure out what, what the right kind of ammo you're using against your targets. Like, armor penetration ammo is better against armor, and, you know, more damage is better against unarmored things like legs or, you know, people not wearing armor. Uh, so you have to figure out what kind of ammo you want to use, load that into your magazines, and, and do it that way. Um, so that's like what's going on here. Um, very complicated system. These guns have thousands of attachments. Every gun has different type of stuff. Uh, you know, trying to find the right combination and, and a gun you're familiar with and comfortable with. I don't know. I guess can probably take a very long time. Uh, so I'm kind of just going through and and I don't, I don't know, just trying whatever <laughs> whatever I can. I started with a couple of these things. I'm trying not to lose the sort of better stuff like the M4. I actually have two of them. Uh, MP5, which I actually have on right now. Uh, these guns over here are ones I took out of scav raids. So, I like, I'll talk about scav raid in a minute, but uh, yeah, so I have a couple extra guns to, to, to lose. I've lost a couple of pistols already. I only have one left. Um, so there's a bunch of, oh, there's medical stuff in here. So in, in game, you need to make sure you're hydrated. There's, so you drink water. Uh, there's different types of medical kits. Like if you could, you can break limbs, you can bleed, you can take damage, you can uh, do all kinds of stuff. And different medical kits do different things to, to help you with that. Uh, f fuel and blankets and all those types of things are used for hideouts and whatever. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, dealers, like I started to show you, these guys have all different types of weapons and armor. Different dealers have different stuff. The therapist has mostly like, um, you know, medical stuff. Uh, I don't know. They all have different things. He's not. Oh, yeah, he is. They have all kinds of different stuff. Uh, weapon attachments and all kinds of different parts. Uh, they also have missions. Oh, he doesn't have any missions. She has a mission. So I can see I'm on this mission right now. It says find these Saliva kits, which are medical kits. I haven't found any yet. Um, but, you know, in a raid, if I find one, I gotta find it. I can bring it to her. Um, 
couple a couple of missions here. So these are you know in-game things. Go do those things. Uh, if you go play a game, you can either play as your character uh, or you can play as a scav. So in the game, there's like uh, you know main characters. These are like main player characters who can complete missions and and you know you bring your loadout in with you, and of course you lose it if you die. You can go in as a scav. So there's also scav players which are like AI. They you know they just uh, they're in the game and they kind of walk around. They they have random loadouts like this guy looks like he has a shotgun and I guess a, some sort of hat thing and a, a vest, you know. But they have random loadouts, not particularly good stuff, just kind of random garbage. Uh, you can go in as one of them and you get that random loadout. Um, and if you make it out alive, you can keep the stuff that you either found or that guy had, like whatever stuff you had on you when you left, you get to keep. So. Um, you know, that's a, a cool way to get a little bit of equipment, although it's pretty trash equipment most of the time, although I guess you can sell it. Um, there's a limit on how, many, how often you can do this. You can only do it once every like 20 minutes or something, so you can do it very often. But it's a good way to go get a little bit of stuff. And, uh, you know, a good way to risk-free go look around a map, too. Uh, that's kind of what I've been using it for. Um, yeah, so Scav Raid is a good way to get stuff. Also, if you go in as a main character, as, a, as your PMC, um, you can pick your map you want to play on. I've been playing on customs a lot because people said to. Um, although actually, I don't know if it's the best map, but <clears throat> I've been going in there. Um, yeah. So then um, you can say I want to go into whatever map, and you can go online or offline. If you turn on offline mode, it's it's you can pick things like oh I want to play, you know easy with tons of AIs or no AIs or hard or like, you know, you can pick who you're playing against. Um, but in offline mode, nothing counts. So you can't complete missions. You can't take equipment out. You can't, uh, you know, if you shoot a bunch of bullets, it doesn't matter. That it doesn't actually lose them. Um, so it's a good way to go. You can actually probably just turn this off, right? Maybe just, oh, just disable PVE entirely. And you can just have no enemies in the map and go look, go walk around and, and look. So that's, Probably a really good thing to do. Um, where's oh, I guess offline one doesn't give you the ability to, yeah, insurance. Like, you can insure weapons and say, like, I'm gonna pay you know some money in order to insure this. Um, and what happens is, like, if you go in and somebody kills you and they take your equipment, well, it's lost. But if somebody, if you go in and you and somebody kills you and they don't take your equipment. Like it's oh somebody might look oh it's a basic MP5 like whatever you know it might be a cheap gun for an advanced player I don't know they would just leave it if they don't take it I'll get it back in like 24, you know, 24 to thirty six hours so you know probably a good thing to insure it's not super expensive um, I'll jump into an offline game real quick just to let's put some let's see what happens here. It takes a few minutes sometimes to load in. Um, in an actual game, it takes a little bit longer. Um, I don't know, find matchmaking, I guess. It takes a really long time to go in as a scab for some reason. I think maybe there's not enough slot. Too many people are trying to do it. I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go in here. And we'll take a look. We'll run around a little bit. Show you some of the movement options we have. Loading. Yeah, see, it takes a long time to load this stuff. Yeah, so like the, the gun building system is super, super complicated. It seems like there's some meta guns that people tend to go for are kind of expensive, I guess. Um, I don't know. It seems like way too easy to lose stuff to me. Like, I, I guess if you're wearing a lot of armor, you can take more than one or two hits. I don't have a ton of armor, so I don't wear a ton of armor. So I tend to get one and two shotted. Um, again, like you have to take shots. Like you, there's different. You know, you can take shots in the head, the chest, the stomach, the arms, legs, whatever. And each of these things has like a different thing. You don't die until you take full damage to your head or your chest. Um, the other ones you just like break. Like you, you know, you break your arm. I think they call blacking out your arm or whatever. Then you don't. Um, you know, you don't shoot very well. If you block out a leg, you can't walk, like that type of stuff. But again, you have like medical stuff that kind of, kind of uh, mitigates that. Let's see, let's see if this goes. OK. 
Come on. All right, here we go. Oh, it's, yeah, it's counting up here. It's been two and a half minutes. I'm just trying to load the game. I've seen, like, normally it takes about four uh, for, like, regular games, and I've done Skype games where it's taken up to ten. Uh, a little longer than ten, even. So when I drop in, the first thing you're going to see in the upper uh, right corner is the extraction points. So it's telling me I can go to ZBO13, Crossroads, Trailer Park, and the other ones have question marks because uh, they may or may not be open. Um, so it really depends. Now I'm in the I'm in here and like, you know, I don't really know where I am. Uh, so I can walk around a little bit. It's some kind of warehouse. It's another warehouse. I fell off the edge. I don't know if you can mantle. I should probably look that up. Uh, so this is your basic walking around. Of course, you can look around. You can sprint too. Run a little faster. You can see the green bar in the bottom left corner is going down. Uh, oh, so much, so much shooting. Listen to like the sound, like the way the sound is too. Like when you're inside, it sounds one way. Outside, it sounds different. Like the sound is very important in this game. Someone's shooting. Uh, so, you know, you go look around. Let's go see if we can shoot somebody. Um, let's see, that. I'll probably die, but... See, in this game, it's not like Warzone where you want to just like run at people and whatever. You like really need to be very careful about sound positioning, um, you know, everything. I don't know where that sound came from. But they must have been shooting at me, right? The only person in this game. Scabs don't shoot at each other. It's like a... I don't know. Whoa. Yeah, it must be shooting at me. This looks like it's over there. I don't know how to get around. I don't even know where I am. Um, there's online maps you can look at and try to figure it out. Um, there's even in-game maps. Is there, yeah, there's a hole over here. Um, but the in-game maps are pretty terrible. Online, online maps are fine, but they're like, you gotta figure out what's going on. Like you don't know where you are. It's not like there's, you know, like a upper left corner HUD thing telling you where things are. Uh, so, you got that. Another thing is about movement. You see, you see me run and everything, but like, you know, holding a gun in front of me, I can aim. I can also like lean. Oops, reloaded by accident. I can lean. I can crouch, but I can like even crouch at different levels. Like choose my crouching level. <laughs> Oh, very specific, depending how much cover you want. I heard someone talking over here, I think. So here's a door. Open it. He was a terrible shot. That was a, also a bad shot. Guns have different fire modes. This is burst, full auto. I can loot him. And he had... Oh, that is a gun of some sort. A knife, I guess. Glasses, whatever. can examine them. Ooh, fancy sunglasses. What does it say? Incompatible. Okay, whatever. That's pretty much how it works. Now, um... 
Hmm. I'm going to show you the... Is this a gas can I can take? Nope. Apparently not. Sometimes there's just random loot on the ground. It's called, like, loose items. Um, oh, hang on. So I just shot bullets, right? So you can see... I don't, it doesn't tell you how many I have left. I shot a couple. Um, I shot one of that magazine. But, like, I want to reload, right? So now I, I know this one has a question mark on it. Uh, I can ask it to check, and it'll tell me. It's almost empty. Uh, this one has 20. You can also do like this in game. And tell me in the bot. You see the bottom right corner says full. Okay, well, there you go. Good. This doesn't tell you exact numbers. It'll just say like mostly full, mostly empty, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to pause this and go take a look at the map. So I switched over to the map here. You can see this is one of the ones on the on the wiki site. Um, I don't, let's see, where were we? So we came out of a building and went into a gas station, right? So came out of a warehouse, maybe here. We didn't cross any railroad tracks. Um, we came out of some sort of a warehouse. And are now in some kind of a gas station. No. Let's try to figure out where we are. Hmm. I actually have no idea. I've been here before. It's not here. Um. Hmm. Maybe. Let's go look around some more. Um, all right. So, it's a crane. Two cranes. Gas station. Yeah, it's definitely a gas station. Hmm. Let's look around and see if we can loot in here a little bit more. Is there anything? I guess it doesn't matter if I loot since it's a custom game, but or offline game. One thing weird about this game is you have to get really close to stuff to. You have to like you have to kind of know what to take. Um, like fuel cans are things, but these fuel cans aren't. So who knows, right? Um, yeah. Not really sure what I can take here. Oop, something opens. There's nothing there. Open. Nothing there. That one's locked. Yeah, so like things like that, you know, if you have, there are keys, all kinds of stuff. Let's walk around a little bit, see if I can get more bearings. UN. There's a train track here. There's a roadblock there. Take a look at the map again. All right, so we saw a little bit more. We saw a roadblock. We saw some train tracks. We saw cranes. These are cranes. This is uh, no. maybe I'm over here. If that's the case. These might be able, these little marks here might be the cars. I might have started he here, and then I went like that. That's probably what happened. Okay, so I'm probably here. 
Um, okay, let's go look at where our extracts are. And again, we'll look them up so you can see blue are both an IMPMC, so green. Uh, I think ZB13 was one is here. Uh, crossroads, we'll try to go to Crossroads, I guess. That's gives us a long run across. So we know uh, the opposite direction we came from along this road uh, all the way out. We'll try to do that. We'll just run and see what happens. So we came from that side through here. Oh, you're still looking at that, aren't you? Uh, uh, so this road I think is the right one. Running along a road is probably generally not a great idea. But it's not a real game, it's only scavs, so... There's a scav. I missed a lot. Oh, got him that time. I can loot him. He's got a gun of some sort. He's got a, f a fancy gun, huh? I'll take that. Now we can switch to it too. We want an MP5. There, AK. We want to know how much ammo he has. Take a look. Nearly full. There you go. Now we have an AK. Now I'm offline, so I'm not going to get to keep it, but if I was. So along this road, there's a little shack. Oh, yeah, I can't keep running, can I? I can walk for a little while. There's another building. Let's take a look what's inside. So it can open the door just by opening it. Sometimes you have to breach doors, just kick them or whatever. Of course, that's loud. Oh, what's that? When you do this, it'll search it, and then individually, oh, here's something, here's something, oh, good. Let's take a bunch of money. There you go. Usually, ooh, what's this? I don't know. Coke. Wonderful. Uh, so I think this road is the one we follow. Oh, yep, across the bridge. I think I put the AI on easy, which is why I get, didn't die. Yeah, they were easy to shoot at. I don't think I've ever crossed this bridge before. Just can't search those things. Like, I'm never really sure what I can search and what I can't, which is... I guess it just comes with experience. So, if you get in a fight with low stamina, it's not great. You can't run away very well. Accuracy is low. Um, so, you generally don't want to run all the time. Crawl underneath this thing. So you can go prone. Now it's starting to rain. There's weather effects. Like, you'll see fog, you'll see, you know, you can play day or night. There's in nighttime, get night vision goggles and stuff. I think this is coming up to the exit. Yeah, that's that red building. I've been there before. This is like the storage town. I've been here before, too. So use it to figure out exactly where to stand. Yeah, here we go. So now I'm just in the extraction point. I just stand here, and I'll come out. Yeah, I survived this one. Of course, it was a fake game, so nothing else happens. It tells me I killed some people and what I killed them with. Um, some stats. You can see I killed two scavs with a headshot. Uh, Usually it tells you like how many bolts you fired and stuff.
whatever. Oh, I guess I gained experience with that. Interesting. And that's how the game works. Keep doing that. Keep getting more stuff. Level up. Level up your hideout. Do some of those missions. Fight other people. Get better equipment. There you go. Normally I'd be able to transfer the equipment and you know back to my character screen. I'd be able to put it over here. You know, keep whatever I want to keep and leave stuff behind. Um, yeah, and go do some missions, spend some money. There you go.